all you cool cats and kittens. Uh, welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. It's been quite some time since I did a character analysis video. Well, it's been quite some time since I've done a video in general, but hey, whatever. Uh, but I have a couple that I'll be releasing here over the next couple weeks. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at a character that many love and wish had an even larger part in the book series, and that's Loghain Ablar. Before getting into the video, I want to quickly shout out and thank all of the patrons supporting the channel over on Patreon. This video is really sponsored by you. YouTube ad revenue has been roughly cut in half lately with everything going on right now, and the support of folks over on Patreon is more important than ever. I appreciate all of you that support me and what we're doing here. None of this would be happening without you. So let's hit a spoiler warning for the video. This video will carry a spoiler rating of red with spoilers all the way through a memory of light. If you have not finished the entire Wheel of Time series, please watch this video at your own risk. There will be major spoilers you have been warned. So as it's been a while since I've done a character analysis video, let me give you all a quick refresh on how I format these analysis videos. I'm going to be breaking down Loghain's character into 10 separate sections to analyze different aspects of his character. The sections are as follows. History before the story, actions during the story, appearance, personality, special abilities and fighting ability, notable possessions, relationships, greatest moments, what happens after the story, overall impact and role in the story, and then at the very end of the video, I'll give my thoughts overall on Loghain's character and whether or not I thought he was executed well, and we'll also briefly mention what we know so far about the Amazon Studios television adaptation of The Wheel of Time. So let's get into it. Loghain was born in 971 of the New Age in Gildon. He was born to a minor noble house and was raised to be a local lord. Now, at some point during his 20s, Loghain realized that he could channel the One Power, and could channel quite strongly. In 998 of the New Age, he declared himself the Dragon Reborn. He attracted quite a few followers in his native Gildon, and as he gathers more and more followers, he wins a couple major battles. The King of Gildon strips Loghain of his noble titles at this point, but it seems like very little can stop him. And then, of course, that leads us up to the events of the main story. Now, at the beginning of the story, Loghain marches his army from Gildon into Murindy, making his way towards Tyr. Loghain had been educated in the prophecies of the dragon, and we later find out Loghain actually thought that he might be the dragon reborn, and that it was his duty to draw Kalandor and lead the armies of the light. He was met in battle again, just short of Lugard in Murindy, by an army as well as Aes Sedai, and he was defeated. He was captured by the group of Aes Sedai. Now, the Aes Sedai kept Loghain captive and shielded as they paraded him from town to town on their way back to Tarvalin, where they planned to gentle him. He is shown in these towns to basically to settle down the people as the wars had frightened a great many, as well to show the power of the Aes Sedai controlling the false dragon. The procession eventually reaches Caimlin, the last major stop before the Aes Sedai continue on to Tarvalin. They parade Loghain through the streets of Camelon and eventually display Loghain captive for more gaze in her court. As he's being marched through Camelon, Randall Thor is in the crowd and notices Loghain appears to be a king despite being in a cage. And Rand actually sees Loghain laugh. Later we find out Loghain had actually laughed because he has the talent of being able to see Taviran and see he saw Rand and knew that he would cause more trouble and destruction in the world than Loghain ever had. Loghain is taken to Tarvalin and gentled by the Aes Sedai. The Aes Sedai attempt to give him a somewhat comfortable life in the White Tower, but he's kept under guard and given an accepted attendant that stays with him at all times. Much of his time in the White Tower is spent on walks in the garden and basically in tears at the loss of his ability to channel. Later, when Min Farshaw arrives in the White Tower, she sees Loghain as she's on her way to see the Amarlin Seat, and she has a viewing that shows Loghain with great glory in his future. Min is alarmed at this and tells Swan Sanche, who agrees to have Loghain's guard increased, but they're not sure how he could possibly have glory in his future given his current state. Swan is later deposed by Elida and the Hall of the Tower, and fighting and chaos envelop the White Tower grounds. Loghain takes this opportunity to escape the tower, but he's unable to cross the bridges to leave the city, as Elida ordered all of them to be shut. Swan, Min, and Liana run into Loghain as they're escaping, and Swan promises him that she can help him get revenge on the Red Aja for gentling him if he goes with them, and she can get him off the island. He agrees, and they escape Tarvalin together. They make their way south into northern Andor, with Loghain gambling at dice to win enough money to buy a sword, a horse, and a new coat. When they reach Core Springs in northern Andor, they are caught trying to stay in a barn of a local farmer, and Loghain, who's going by Dalen at this time, accidentally causes the farmer to set his barn on fire, 
And then he steals a bag of coins and some horses from the farmer, and then he leaves Liana Min and Swan to get caught. He later comes back for them after they've been sentenced to work in Gareth Bren's manor house, and he attempts to take over control of the group from Swan, and she allows it basically because she wants Loghain to help be a part of her plot to reestablish herself with the Aes Sedai. They reach Lugard in Murundi, where Swan discovers the location of the rebel Aes Sedai in Saladar, but Loghain begins to become more and more distant and depressed the gentling catching up with him again. He is barely coherent when they arrive in Saladar, but he is reinvigorated when Swan involves him in her plan to say the Red Aja set him up as a false dragon, even though that wasn't true. He tells nobles this story as many of them visit the Aes Sedai, and then he tells all of the Aes Sedai. Now, Nynaeve begins to study him in Saladar with the intention to discover how to heal Stilling. She is forced to do this because Swan and Lyanna avoid her, but one day while she's studying Loghain, she accidentally heals him and he regains the ability to channel. His strength is the same as before he was gentled. This is later explained why his strength stayed the same and Swan and Liana didn't is because women can heal men and men can heal women but if they heal the same sex they have less strength than they did before. Now he's kept under guard and shielded in the Aes Sedai camp as they try to figure out whether to gentle him again or to even have him executed. Once Egwene is raised Omerlin she arranges to allow him to escape by serving the guards fork root tea. She reasons that they cannot support Rand as the Dragon Reborn by not honoring his amnesty for men that can channel, so she lets Loghain go. Now Loghain leaves Saladar and makes his way to the Black Tower. He is raised to full Ashaman, most likely due to his great strength and, and experience. He's the only full Ashaman raised by Taim that is not one of Taim's cronies. While in the Black Tower, Loghain leads a faction that is separate from Taim, and a rivalry develops. Loghain leads a party of his followers outside the Black Tower walls to capture a group of Aes Sedai that were sent by Elida to eradicate the Black Tower. Loghain bonds a few of the Aes Sedai, Gabrella and Tovin. It's kind of a warder bond formed by men. It forces women to obey, however, so it doesn't work like the normal warder bond. Loghain actually treats his captured and bonded Aes Sedai fairly well despite their captivity, and Gabrella begins to share his bed in her way of trying to get close to him and get his confidence. Loghain protects them from retribution from others in the Black Tower by destroying Elida's orders to eradicate the Black Tower and gentle the men on the spot. Loghain obtains permission from Taim to scout new men to join the Black Tower, something that's thought of as a menial task that's kind of below him. His actual intention here, though, is to leave the Black Tower and find Ran and inform him of what's going on in the Black Tower. He leaves for Cayman and eventually Kyrian, gathering more and more followers as he goes. Davram Bashir joins him with the uh, Saldean soldiers, as well as more Aes Sedai and Kyrian. They eventually find Rand and his party at Lord Augurin's manor house in Tyr, where Rand is recovering from the cleansing of the taint on Sidene. Rand then sends Loghain to set up a meeting with the Shan Chan, and, and he succeeds in setting up a meeting with who he believes is the daughter of the Nine Moons but it's actually Samurag in disguise. Rand later sends Loghain to meet with the Borderland army. When Loghain returns to report, a massive Trolloc army attacks the manor, and Luz Theron Telamon takes over Rand's body and begins weaving incredibly destructive weaves that Loghain has never seen. Loghain is able to copy them, and they completely destroy the Trolloc army. Loghain is unaware that Rand is not in control and wonders if Rand has been holding back and teaching weaves like this. He also points out that Rand is still holding Sidene, and these are just signs that Rand is completely losing control. Rand then sends Loghain to meet with the Atha on Mier to have them send ships to Aradoman with food for close to a million people in Rand's plan to bring order to Aradoman. They push back on Loghain as they say they need to sail to Tremalking to find the surviving Amayar, the residents of the Seafolk Island. They had committed mass suicide after the destruction of the female Choden Call statue that was on Tremulking, that they had basically worshipped it as a god, and so when it destroyed, they basically killed themselves. Loghain forces them to honor their b bargain with Rand, however, and so they end up following through and taking the food to Aradaman. Later, Loghain is present when Rand meets with Simarag disguised as the daughter of the Nine Moons. He participates in the short battle there. He leaves it uninjured. Rand obviously loses a hand. Now, from this point, Loghain eventually returns to the Black Tower and goes missing for quite some time. His followers begin to believe something's wrong, and the men in the Black Tower start to change after getting private lessons from Taim. They eventually learn that Loghain had been captured by Taim and was being turned to the shadow through the use of 13 Murdral and 13 Dreadlords. A rescue is led by Andral Genhol and some of Loghain's other followers in the Black Tower, but it initially fails. Later, after Perrin removes the dream spike that had been preventing gateways within the walls, 
They are able to defeat Taim and Hesalam, who is the reincarnated version of Grendel, and they save Loghain, although Loghain is very changed by the attempted turning. Basically, he's a little bit darker. Now, the now liberated Ashaman join the last battle at the side of Elaine outside of Kyrian. They are able to help defeat the army there, and Loghain leads the Ashaman through the last battle. He receives the fat little man Angriol from Rand and uses it in the battles. He eventually attempts to fight against Demon Dread, but is completely overwhelmed as Demon Dread is wielding Sakarnan, an incredibly powerful Sa'angriol. Loghain escapes, but becomes obsessed with finding the Sa'angriol after Egwene kills Taim when he possessed it. Just as he's about to find it, Andral pleads with Loghain to help save the refugees from Camelin from a Trolloc attack. Loghain is forced to make a decision between seeking the power of the Sa'angriol and saving the people, and he decides to save the people. Now, the refugees from Camelin are genuinely grateful and tell Loghain that they will send their sons to be tested in the Black Tower. And Loghain sees that he can be of service in the world and that there is a place in the world for male channelers that's not just being hunted. So we last see Loghain in one of those pivotal moments of the entire series. Loghain sees a beam of light emanating from Shea Ghoul, and at Gabrell's request, he breaks the seals on the Dark One's prison that they had stolen back from Taim's minions. This enables Rand to seal the Dark One's prison for good, and Gabrella names Loghain Sealbreaker. Loghain is described as being very tall with dark flowing hair that comes down to his shoulders. He's considered to be very handsome and a very imposing figure. He has very broad shoulders, and he has what's described as an arrogant face. He's known to wear the sigil of his house from Gildon, which is three golden crowns on a field of blue. Loghain is a minor noble from Gildon, and he very much carries himself as one that's nobly born. He has a domineering presence, and many consider him dangerous when they meet him, although much of this can be attributed to his time as a false dragon, and the fear of him being associated with that, really. He's also described as being on the edge of tension, always ready for battle or some surprise. Again, I think this can be attributed to the experiences he's had in his life being hunted as a male channeler. He is fair and kind, and yet firm when he needs to be. He often treads the line between ambition and responsibility, but he's able to inspire quite a few people to follow him. Loghain is an especially powerful channeler of the One Power. He has a ranking of two, putting him very near the very top of the scale in terms of the amount of One Power that he could channel. The only more powerful channelers in the entire series are Ravine, Moradin, and Randall Thor. As with other very powerful channelers, he's able to learn weaves very quickly, sometimes after seeing them just once. This is evidenced by when he learned Death Gates and Arrows of Fire from Rand at Lord Augurin's Manor while fighting the Trolloc army. We also know that one of Loghain's talents is the ability to see Tavirin. He sees Tavirin as glowing and surrounded by light, and we actually see this in, in effect when he sees Rand and Eye of the World. Loghain does not have many possessions throughout the series as he loses most of his belongings early on in the series after his defeat by the Aes Sedai. The only thing of note that he has later on in the story is that he receives the fat little man Angriol from Rand. It's a moderately powerful Angriol, and this is the same one that Rand uses in, earlier in the series and then later in Towers of Midnight when Rand basically decimates an army of Trollocs at Maradon. Loghain doesn't have many strong relationships within the series. It's clear he doesn't have much trust in him, and he questions the intentions of most people. For instance, he meets and follows Rand for a good bit towards the later books. Although he tends to obey, he questions Rand constantly and believes himself to basically be Rand's equal. He has strong relationships with his followers, and with the Aes Sedai he bonds, specifically Gabrella, who he ends up having a sexual relationship with. He cares for them despite keeping them captive with his bond, which is a little odd. Additionally, he commands a good amount of respect from those that follow him, and they trust him explicitly and risk their lives to save him. Some of that can be attributed to his great power, but there is something about him that inspires people to follow him. Loghain has a few standout moments in the series. I think the biggest moment for him actually happens in the last battle, and it shows the arc of his character, and that's the decision to leave the Sakarnan in favor of saving refugees from Caiman. Loghain's biggest desire as a character to this point in the story is to have agency and control over his life rather than others controlling his life, and he sees power as the way to accomplish this. The Sakarnan would have made him the most powerful person in a post-last battle world. By choosing to abandon power and pursue service of others, he achieves a thing that he had always wanted. Rather than being looked upon with scorn or fear, 
as a man who could channel, he was looked on as someone who was admired because he could channel. I just felt like this was such a great moment for Loghain as a character and a great part of his arc. So what happens after the end of A Memory of Light to Loghain's character? Well, he's now the undisputed leader of the Black Tower, especially with Rand no longer in the picture. The revelations that men can channel being accepted rather than scorned around the world would be slow. I think society would slowly change, but Loghain would lead the Black Tower in its infancy as the most powerful channeler in the world. And I believe that he would be looking for ways the Black Tower could serve or maybe even mirror the White Tower. I also believe there would be strong bonds with the White Tower despite the rocky past between Loghain and the Red Aja and the fact that Loghain has bonded sisters. Now because he bonded those sisters and they fought together in the last battle, uh, I think that they may actually mend some fences here. The new Amarlin seat, Cad Swain, had also worked with men who could channel and specifically Loghain and I believe there would be a tenuous bond between the White and Black Towers. I believe that as a part of this Loghain would release Gabriella's bond but they would remain together in, in some fashion. The common struggles they've been through and the respect they develop over time could lead them to remaining a couple of sorts. Now, barring any accidental death or violence, Loghain would have an incredibly long life in front of him. He's not bound by the Oath Rod, and with his level of strength in the One Power, Loghain could reasonably expect to live another 750 years, which is an absolutely staggering amount of time. Loghain would likely play a major role in shaping the Fourth Age. Loghain is a relatively minor character that manages to have a major role in the story from start to finish, and he really ends the story in a very powerful position. He plays a major part in the story despite his infrequent page time. In the story, Loghain doesn't necessarily fit a normal trope, but he comes across as a very believable character given his circumstances. His actions seem plausible and real, and while he certainly is no angel, at his core, he tends to do the right thing. His approach is more pragmatic in that he will do whatever it takes to achieve what he believes is right, but he, he tends to end up doing the right thing. In conclusion, Loghain is a complicated character, and yet he's a fan favorite. I think we all love the complicated good guy of sorts, and that's really what Loghain is. He's very powerful. He's on the right side, but he's also not perfect. I know for me, I always wanted to see more of Loghain in the story. I wanted him to play a larger role, and I always thought that because he'd been around long enough that we might get more POV chapters toward the end, but we just never got quite enough in my opinion. In the upcoming Wheel of Time television show, in production by Amazon Studios, Loghain is set to be played by Alvaro Morte of Money Heist fame. Wheel of Time showrunner Rafe Judkins has stated that Loghain should see an expanded role in the television show, and that has me pretty excited. So what do you all think of Loghain as a character? Do you guys like him? Do you also wish we got more of him? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release new Wheel of Time content. Also consider checking out my Patreon page and supporting the channel. Right now, ad revenue is cut in half with everything going on, and Patreon supporters are more important than ever. Thank you guys to all of you who already support the channel. Thanks for watching, and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?